So the interesting question here is what is the minimum bandwidth that I need to provide so that I can recover this sent waveform without any errors. So Nyquist tried to answer this question and this is what he found. He figured out that the number of independent pulses that could be put through a channel per unit time is limited to twice the bandwidth of the channel. What does it mean? Basically this. So if FP is the pulse rate and B is the channel bandwidth, that is the link bandwidth, this relation has to hold. Let's look at it from the perspective of the previous example. Now, if the pulse was binary, this is the rate 2000 F bits per second. That means FP is equal to 2000. Now, if I want to recover this pulse without error, now B should be greater than or equal to FP over 2. That means it should be greater than or equal to 1000 hertz. In other words, I need to provide a link bandwidth of at least 1000 hertz if I have to recover this particular pulse waveform. Now consider this data stream that is this signal and let's again assume that this is being sent at a data rate of 2000 bits per second. So according to Nyquist I need at least 1000 hertz but let me just say I provide infinite link bandwidth. So there is not going to be any problem recovering the signal but I am going to add one other thing which is noise as part of the media because physical media do experience noise. So what I am going to receive is this signal which is nothing but this signal plus the noise signal. Now if you decode this received signal basically let's say you sample at the middle of the bit interval and find out what the voltage levels are and you figure out that uh, 1 corresponds to high voltage, 0 corresponds to low voltage and you decoded this data stream, you see that you have made some errors. The errors are in these locations where basically the noise happens to peak. Now you must be wondering what I provided infinite link bandwidth and still I am not able to recover the signal. What's happening? Well, Nyquist in his derivations did not consider the effect of noise but in reality noise is very much present and its effect cannot be ignored. So here comes Shannon. Shannon is a legend in information theory and he considered both the channel bandwidth as well as noise. So basically he provided an upper bound to the capacity of a link. What do I mean by capacity? Capacity is the maximum achievable data rate. And the formula he provided is given by this. So the maximum achievable data rate which is the capacity is given as B log 1 plus S by N where B is the channel bandwidth that is the link bandwidth and Sn is signal to noise ratio. Often it is expressed in decibels but here in the formula you have to use a ratio. Remember we talked about attenuation earlier. This is very similar where the signal to noise ratio is given by this particular formula when expressed in decibels. That is suppose if this was 30 decibels this corresponds to a signal to noise ratio of 1000 that means the signal is 1000 times more powerful than the noise. Now let's see an example of Shannon theory. Have you ever used telephone modems? I guess these are becoming extinct these days but supposedly you have a telephone line which you want to use for data transmission. Now this telephone line has a bandwidth of 3000 hertz because it supports voice frequencies ranging from 300 to 3300. So it has a capacity, uh, sorry, it has a bandwidth of 3000 hertz. Now suppose the length of the cable is such that at the receiver I have a signal to noise ratio of 1000 that translates to 30 decibels. Now let me plug it in here. So I have 3000 log to 1 plus 1000. If you work it out, this turns out to be roughly 30 kbps. 
So over this telephone modem, I can achieve a bandwidth of 30 kilobits per second. By the way, that is the maximum achievable rate. Now, I know some of you who have used telephone modems will say, hey, I have achieved 56 kbps. Now, is Shannon wrong? Definitely not. Why do you think you were able to achieve 56 kbps? Shannon, while he gave this beautiful theorem, does not specify how to achieve that particular maximum achievable data rate. In other words, he doesn't specify what type of modulation or encoding one should use to reach the limit. All the theorem claims is if the sent data rate, so this is the maximum data rate and this is the sent data rate, as long as the send data race is less than the maximum, there exists a coding technique which will permit transmission of data with arbitrarily small error. Real systems rarely achieve this upper bound. Let me give an example of Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi employs a modulation technique called 64QAM. We will cover more of modulation in the next video. For now, just take it for granted and it operates over a link bandwidth of 20 megahertz and for this it needs about 27 db now if i were to plug in this 20 megahertz link bandwidth and signal to noise ratio corresponding to 20 decibels shannon theorem tells me that i can achieve 124 mbps but what did this particular modulation achieve a mere 54 mbps so as you can see, real systems rarely achieve this upper bound, but the goal is to try to achieve this upper bound. That's where a lot of research happens. Now, Shannon also specifies that if R were greater than C, in other words, you have a maximum achievable rate, but if you were to send data that exceeds this rate, the probability of error increases without bound. What this means is you cannot recover the signal. So that's with respect to data rate.